Well, it's in the breakfast and plus TV Africa. And if you're joining, thank you for joining us. And also thank you for staying with us. Uh, we have Ezekiel Yaito who joins us this morning for Off the Press. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, Tue Kong, uh, you know, I really like that name. <laughs> it sounds like, you know, a man who's actually going, uh, you know, to battle with the sword. It's actually um, general, decorated general, like Ariel Nakakam, for it's about the highest title you can be given <laughs> within this part of the world. I salute you. Well, it's good to have you on our show this morning. Let's start off with a punch. On the Punch newspaper, Atiku launches campaign, Books, a grieved governor's boycott event. That's the bold caption on the Punch. It's quite different from what you would have yesterday. Uh, underneath, Buhari government has failed. Nigerian disarray, uh, federalism faulty. That's what the PDP candidates quoted to say. Of course, Alaji Atiku Abubakar. But some persons have said, beyond all of this, the electorate need to ask the very vital question because I think we have been in that phase where people come out and say, we're going to solve the problem. So if it's electricity, we're going to solve it. But the big, bigger question should be, how will it be solved? We're talking about the practical ways to solve the question or solve the problem. Why are Tom Makinde Ikpeazu orders won't campaign for uh, the ex-vice president? That's what an aide is quoted to say. Again, you have a PDP remains a strong party. We're campaigning to win. Governor uh, Emmanuel, or Dom Emmanuel, apparently, is quoted on that. These are the writers you find underneath the bold caption, but they are more interesting headlines. Another says, states to get $750 million World Bank loan in December. And politicians may destroy Nigeria. A former president, Olusha Gunabasanjo, raises the alarm. How would be the question? Obi supporters cannot gather at Lekki toll gates. Uh, that's what the court's saying. And some people have not. The likes of, uh, you know, Shore, has actually not, you know, supported this. Looking at his comment among others. Some people prior to this time have said that. The OB movements can be juxtaposed with that of the NSAS. And I really don't know, uh, you know, the thoughts behind all of that. All thefts, federal government probes exploration production by IOCs. And just before we move away from uh, the punch... Dream killers, how South Africa's flawed visa process for straight Nigerians. There's another bold caption, N not exactly bold, but there's another header you find this morning on the punch. And the PNID scam, court revokes director's bail, orders re-arrest. Senate ticket, Machina floors Ahmed Lawan and seeks reconciliation. Uh, that's on the Punch newspaper. It's really interesting. Uh, we know we have some experts who've tried to explain the same scenario with Machina and Akpabu. Well, uh, the nation is what we have. Next, looking at the nation newspaper. Rike Makinde or Tom Sean Atiku's campaign launch. And that's really funny because contrary, I mean, prior to this time, uh, it felt like, according to the reports that, you know, or Tom had all already cut ties with the likes of, you know, Wiki. But really, what could have been responsible? We're hoping that uh, our guests will have an answer. Ogowani, Ekpazu, and Southwest Chieftain also absent. NEC members alleges 28 million naira offer to derail opposition party. PDP flag bearer promises restructuring and good governance that uh, Atiku... Abubakar, right there. Mid China, North Lawan, is Yobe North Central candidate. Court rule, Obi Dati 23, rally cannot hold a lucky toll gate. <laughs> That's what is quoted uh, on the nation this morning. And just before we move away from the nation, you also have DCO, civilian killed in attack on Oyo police station. Akir Dolu to federal government. Arms are to protect Ondo residents. My leadership will inspire Nigeria to greater heights, says Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Uh, that's the uh, flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress 
uh, quoted on that one. But that's the much we can take on the nation. Quickly, before us, we have the Daily Trust newspaper. On the Daily Trust, race to presidency, I'm out to rescue Nigeria. Sounds like, you know, uh, Santa Claus has come to town quite early, uh, Tiku is quoted to say. I'm out to rescue Nigeria. That's the race of presidency. Former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, is uh, attributed to that quote. And Wike, marking day three, PDP governors absent at campaign launch. What does this mean for the PDP? PDP remains strong despite doom says. Okay. Udom Emmanuel is quoted on that. 18 presidential candidates signed peace accord today. Uh, have you ever wondered why over time we signed the peace accord, but has that really translated to, you know, real peace? When we talk about uh, tangible peace that, you know, the, those who are vying, I mean, this candidate would accept the outcome of the elections. IPUB kills five soldiers, civilians in Anambra, and Yobe Nuff court rejects Ahmed Lawan and recognizes me China. And then PC orders to raise gas use to 5 million tons in three years. And over 20 feared kill in Kogi tanker explosion. There's also another picture here. Uh, quite saddening, but I'm sure you want to find out what that's about. Flood sacks 13 Anambra community and renders many families homeless. And despite federal government's caution, Akiri Dolu insists on uh, arming Amoteku. Flood and drought and security have affected us badly. This is what farmers are saying. And that's the headlines on the Daily Trust this morning. Now, thanks to uh, the paper vendor, we have the Daily Sun newspaper in front of us. The Daily Sun says, a Tiku confidence of victory as APC moves to resolve campaign issues. It's just natural that at this point, everyone expects that all houses should put their acts together. WK allies shown PDP's PCC inauguration. LP kicks off campaign in Joss. And uh, you have another caption saying, Stop threatening us with Igbo president. Northern elders tell Ohanese. Some using a name fake. And Pan Igbo body tells the NEF. Another says, CBN goes after states, firms, individuals to recover 9.3 trillion intervention loans. Nigeria 62. NAF asks Abuja residents not to panic over the aerial plane rehearsals. <laughs> uh, well, 2023 may make or may mar Nigeria. That's what uh, former President Obasanjo is quoted to say. And uh, Muslim Muslim ticket, Lalong Dogara trade tackles. Gunmen kill four soldiers, one civilian in Anambra, and mother DCO detainee in you know, your police station attack. Well, that's it this morning on the Daily Sun newspaper. Well, we quickly turn, uh, you know, to our guest, Ezekiel Nyaito, who joins us this morning. Ezekiel, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Right there. Well, we start off with the court ruling or the court rule saying that Obi Dati 2023 rally cannot, you know, hold at Lekki toll gate. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on this, especially where, you know, the, the law, the constitution talks about freedom of association and it also talks about the movement. You know, everyone has a right to move and own properties in any parts of the country. Uh, my perspective is... Uh actually a little different. While, while I think that um, everybody has right of uh, movement, but I think it is the place of the law to um, protect the system, the society. And I, I'll say this from a completely different uh, perspective in the sense that um, <laughs> I think that it will be suicide for, for, for my brother, um, Peter will be to launch his campaign at the toll gate, um, you know, at the Lekki toll gate. It will be suicidal. From what we we have seen in Jos and the way Lagos is, I think that the federal government should beg obese people to go to the national stadium at Surulere so that 
the crowd can be controlled so that there'll be no collateral damages. So for me, my perspective is not so much whether they have a right or they don't have a right. I want to look at it from the perspective of safety because the crowd in that place is going to, hum going to be humongous and might be difficult to control. So if I had my way, I would say they should please open the national stadium you know, in Surulere for them to go there because that's probably one of the largest venues and that place will be packed full. Uh, what, what's happening, I, I think that <laughs> those guys are out to make a statement and um, I, I really think that is not the issue of uh, fundamental right. But even that right of association has to be with respect to public safety and um uh, there's a certain crowd that you want to move into a certain place and then government will be irresponsible if they did not do that. But they shouldn't get about it as per, no, you can't be there. It should be more like, you know, telling them, you know, I, I think that that place is not suitable for you. I think that that place will be too small for you. I think that you should consider a larger place. And if such, if they went about it that way, and for any reason, there was any um, incident that was untoward or not too good, then the, 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 the rally organizers would be held responsible and government would have become the hero. But when you now try to say, no, you can't do that, it's like you're trying to stop them uh, out of um, bad belly. And that's not really good for government. Government should learn to be a little more strategic. You can get what you want. Just look for a way of having that thing done. Well, um, so I, I'd like to ask you also, on, on what premise is this coming on? Uh, because you have some people who have said that Peter Obi is a political movement that's similar to the hashtag answers. And we understand that Lagos was, is an epicenter. And, you know, the answers hashtag process, if you're talking about the climax of it, uh, you know, was in Lagos. And Lekki Togilt cannot be left out of this. So do you, do you really agree with those who are saying that Peter Obi is a political movement that's similar to the hashtag answers? And if your answer is yes, then why? I'll tell you, you see, when I come here, um, I try very hard to wear a different cap. You would understand that I belong to a political party and that um, I have a presidential candidate. But I also know that I'm not called here as a member of a party, but somebody who is, is expected to be non-partisan in my analysis and somebody who is expected to be very, very objective. To that extent, I, I would like to reiterate what I said earlier. We need to have thinking government. I believe that without even asking any questions, I believe that the Peter Obi movement is akin to the NSAR stuff. You can't take that out. You can't take that out. There are too many things that are similar. You know, they don't ask you for money. They are not waiting for the leaders to bring money. They are not mobilized by by the leadership. I mean, they just do their thing. So I, I always say that Peter Obi, the, the, the obedient movement is, is not a person movement. It's an ideology that the young people had crafted for themselves long before today. And Peter Obi is lucky, so to speak. Not just lucky, he's had the antecedents to fit into that movement. And I want to say that he's not actually the only presidential candidate that fits into that movement. He's just the face of it. I believe that obedient movement is an ideology that applies, you know, to people who, number one, are, 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 are careful to, to know that government money is not personal money. That is obedient movement. People who care about the masses, that's the obedient movement. People who are willing to do what will better the lot of the young people. That is the obedient movement. I'll tell you this. In Akwai State, for instance, you know, I've been, you know, put in the obedient movement. And I try very hard to see, to let them know that, look, I belong to a different political party. And all they say is that, sir, it's not about party, it's person. There's a hashtag called person, not party. And that is the, the, the hashtag they are operating now. That is becoming the Nigeria thing. So there may be somebody in PDP, in Quara, that fits into the obedient movement. Or somebody in ADC, in Adamawa, that fits into the obedient movement. So the obedient movement is not a person, 
but an ideology, it's a vision, and it takes its root from the NSAS movement. So you really cannot differentiate the NSAS from this movement. It is within that context that I say that government should have been a little more forward thinking so that they, they try not to link the two because, you know, it is like a symbolism going to that Lekki Tollgate. It, it's symbolic of that movement. It's an animation, you know, of that movement. So what they should have done was to have come about it, the, 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 the back door and say, look, you know, this the way this thing is going and what the tragedy we had in that place, your crowd is likely to be so much and we the place is a little tight. Please look for a place that is more open, you know, whatever, so that you, if you like, you can pay a visit to that place, you know, which is your right with time. But for the when launching of your campaign, the crowd is not suitable. And again, they could have even have used civil societies to make that movement. You know, we really have governments that don't think, and it bothers me a lot. If you are a thinking government, you can get what you want. Just be a little wiser in your approach to it. Mm. Because, I mean, from all of the things that you have said, they sound really very nice. And so one would be wondering why um, there's a stop to that. If you look at those who protested, uh, the protests, especially those who gathered at the Lekki Togate for the hashtag answers, these persons were not armed. And so if you say that, they should not stop at that point. We know that the Constitution is very explicit about, uh, you know, association. Everyone has a right to an association unless, or protests, unless they are a threat to national security. And so if you have a group of persons who are saying, we're only coming out to say, uh, we're trying to support, you know, for a certain candidate, uh, don't you think that that's some sort of restriction uh, that a lot of people, because this didn't just happen, the courts didn't just wake up to give that injunction. Uh, some persons came together, decided to approach the court, and, you know, uh, put out all of that. And of course, the court went ahead to, to give that particular order. But because it's sounding like if the people, the, the people are a threat, it's like, you know, uh, maybe they are armed or these are terrorists who, who, who actually plan to gather. Of course, terrorists can't even gather in that sense. But so what could he really mean? I mean, how harmless or how harmful are these persons if they decide that um, this is where we want to stay and have the protests? That they are not carrying arms. They're just a group of persons who are saying we're throwing our support for a certain candidate and they're out about. Don't you think that this is a violation of their human rights in a democratic you, you see, setting? Yeah. One of the biggest problems that I have with the court today is that they are, they are not, they are, they are almost becoming a threat to, 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 to our, our democratic system. They are becoming a tool in the hands of, of people rather than serve the people. Number one, it is our fundamental right to associate wherever we wish, only to the end that, like you rightly put, the, the, the safety of the society is not at risk. Number two, we all know that government is scared stiff of allowing the obedient movement to, to have that direct animation and correlation with the NSAS movement. We all know that it's the same thing. But you see, they are afraid because the moment you create that nexus, that link, it, it sends a, a shockwave across the whole nation. It reverberates with the whole youth. It, it kind of endorses the fact that this is a youth movement. This is our movement. Government is scared. Well, Ezekiel Yai, uh, I'm not sure you can hear us. We seem to have a bit of a network issue. And, you know, that's uh, very, you know, common with our a network in Nigeria. We we'll apologize uh, that you're not able to hear Zika Nyai take as soon as we're able to uh, connect with him and have him share his thoughts on the issue. 
then it will be fantastic and great. But in the meantime, uh, we're looking at the issues surrounding the, the fact that the court has ruled or given a ruling as regard a certain uh, group of persons or persons who have decided to support a certain candidate ahead of the 2023 elections. And everyone has a right of freedom, movement, and what have you, up until when you become a threat to national security. And if, if you say that persons who are uh, harmless. I really don't understand the rationale behind uh, those who are juxtaposing or comparing uh, supporters of Peter Obi or the Peter Obi movement, as some have tagged it, to the hashtag answers. But our guest has been able to identify the similarities. This is a group of persons who are not bothered about money, who are not concerned about whatever it is. They are, you know, self-driven. And it sounds like an interesting, you know, fact or, or thing uh, for the Nigerian people. But uh, this is what it is. And so it's, it's quite worrisome. Why would the court, what are the premises? How did the, the, you know, the judiciary or the court arrive at you know, that ruling? What were the factors that were considered before saying, hey, this group of persons cannot be allowed? They're not terrorists. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not like they're bearing arms. What exactly could be the issue? Ezekiel Yaitouk, if you can hear me, it will be great. Unfortunately not. I can hear you loud and clear. All Let right me then. tell you this. Yes. You see, the oxygen of that political maneuver in Nigeria is money. The so-called big parties have, have, have believed in the use of money to rent crowd. Right now, some companies are starting to come up. I don't know if they, they will allow them to get registered. The, 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 the CRC, the, the crowd renting company, you know? Oh, really? Just tell me I want 50,000 people, and they will now tell you the number of buses. They tell you the cost per bus, the cost per person. Pay them, and they deliver the crowd to you. So the moment you bring this obedient movement, you demystify that, that, that their stronghold where... People can now come out without asking for money. No shishi movement. It is it it it. The, the government is scared stiff. The people in power that think they have money, they are scared stiff that a young person, that a a, a a not so rich person, will come up and that that movement will take them to power, and then they will lose their hold on power. You should understand that government is not is not happy. They, they, they are having sleepless nights. They are thinking, what else can we do? And government always resorts to one thing, and that is the use of force. That force is either, you know, physical force or legal force. And I really want to appeal to our courts to know that their symbol is a blinded eye. And please, they are the last hope of the common man. They start, should stop being used by a government. Let this movement become the liberation of our, our people, where people have the freedom to choose who they want and not to be manipulated into poverty so that at the end of the day, they can be bought cheap. It's a movement that all of us subscribe to. And it's a movement that I want to call on all patriotic Nigerians to tell government, hands off, and let the youth, and let the people be. The No Shishi movement is a movement oh, so, that so has the, come the, to the, liberate this, this reminds me of my grandmother, No Shishi <laughs> movement. Okay, no quite shi interesting. Uh, let's turn our attention to the Daily uh, Sun newspaper right here. Now, on the Daily Sun, amongst other papers, it talks about the uh, opposition party, major opposition party. And we hear that uh, there are some persons who were not parts. Uh, these persons are very critical. And so uh, the paper says that allies, WK allies, shun the People's uh, Democratic Party's presidential uh, council campaign, inauguration of that particular campaign. Do you think that this would actually mean anything? The likes of WK or Tom and what have you, Mackinday, not being part of you know, the inauguration. Does this mean anything really? As you see, it, you know, as a party yes. man, you you are a party man. Yes, I'll t I'll tell you this, and Nigerians need to wake up and smell the coffee. 
politicians owe no loyalties, no allegiances whatsoever to the vehicle. It is about their interest. Vehicle is vehicle. You get to the airport, you can go by Bomb Air, you can go by Max Airline, you can go by United, you can go by any airline. The important thing is I'm trying to leave Abuja to go to Lagos. So if you think, oh, he's so patriotic and so bothered about these airlines, they lie. Politicians don't care about parties. The people in PDP have looked at the crystal ball and their, their principle right now is not helping matters. I, I still can't understand why the, the, the Mr. Tiku cannot have a three-man meeting. I really can't. Not even a three, a two-man meeting himself and the party chairman. He's like, guy, you know this thing is getting out of hand. Please, let's, 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 let's deal. And then the next meeting is one-on-one -on -one himself and Wike. And he says, my brother, I'm willing to make this concession. It's getting late in the day. Please, what do we do? For him to call Wike's bluff, is Wike reading the pendulum? And seeing that the momentum is in two areas right now, right now, in the next few weeks, what they are doing is waiting to see the campaign start because there are some, you know, I've given you three circles. First circle is a circle of PDP, PDA, APC, you know, old people on old um, vehicles. The second circle is that of um, Kwan Kwaso and um, Peter Obi, which is old people in new vehicles. There's a third circle which is that of new vehicles, new people. And that is SDP and um, ADC, you know, talking about um, uh, Adewale and um, Mr. Kachiku. These six people are going to redefine the dynamics. And what we get them are looking at, they are seeing a possibility of a runoff where one person might not win because each of them is going to get a major bite chunk of what is going on. I, can, I belong to ADC. I've seen the game plan of that young man called Mr. Dumedi Kachiko. And trust me, in the next few weeks, there's going to be a major tsunami in a certain direction. He's going to have his crowd. You can't rule out Kwan Kwaso. He's going to have SDP, uh, my brother Adewale, he's going to have. So they are looking at, you know, a possibility. And right now, it should have been like the three horse race they have always said, which is um, PDP, APC, and Labour. But PDP is losing out leaving APC and labor. So these guys are looking at when the new blocks, the new kids come in, where will they, where will the alignment still, where will the momentum still, you know, move? And they are seeing PDP losing out in this equation. As a result, I think that Atiku has very tactfully worked himself out of reckoning. That is my own very, very, very honest opinion. I, I, How it pans out in the coming weeks, say. there's going to be a lot of changes, a lot of dynamics as soon as the campaign starts. By around November, December, we will know the major players that are on the block. Well, uh, so you, you, you have said something about uh, vehicle destination and politicians. So my question is, I mean, you, you are in a certain vehicle, so why are you in that vehicle when you know that uh, for every vehicle that you bought, you know the destination? So why would you be yeah. in a certain vehicle when you know Thank that you. your destination awesome is not question. the same as that? And um, so where exactly are they going to really? If, if they're in the wrong, you know, they're just in a vehicle that they know where the destination is, but they know that that's not their destination. So where, where could they be going to? The likes of Wiki, Makinde, and Otom, if they're really shown, you know, the inauguration, and that's a sign. So where exactly are they headed? They are heading to where they are in power in 2023. Where's that? Is there, where is is there a place? Whoever will win. So they are watching. You know, we have six months. There's six months to election. Let people not forget that. It's not tomorrow. It's not next tomorrow. There's six months to election. So people are doing their political calculation. They are waiting to see because, you see, you can't really judge the momentum as it is. You are going to give one month from the the start of campaign. That's when we are going to see the programs of the people, the projects of the people, and how they resonate with the people. For instance, I tell you, Akwaibon, for instance, 
You know, everybody knows about APC. Everybody knows about PDP. There's not much you can say. Now, every attention is on ADC. What is he saying? What can be done? What is he saying? Where does he belong? And people are watching. Even the old politicians are watching me. They want to see as soon as campaign kicks off. They've been watching what I've been doing, consultations. They don't understand a lot of things because they are underground. Consultations is like, you know, more, more, sub, sub, um, uh, 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 more subtle. But when the campaign starts, then they will see the momentum, how it builds. Right now, a lot of people are like waiting and watching. They want to be in power come 2023. So they want to see where the pendulum is swinging. As a result, whatever analysis we do now is going to be a, almost a weekly update. A weekly update. Now, if um, Article is able to quickly get back to these people, bring them back, build the momentum, by the end of October, the song will be different. But if it continues to call their bluff, and this will continue to look in other directions, other possibilities, it might come a little too late in the day when all of them can stay in PDP. And that's the worst thing that, that's the worst nightmare that, um, that Atiku has. If they left the party, it would be easier for you to know what to do. But they are there in the party. They are listening to you. They are getting your game plan. What you should have come out early enough to start building with your people. You are not able to come out because you're like, where does it belong? And there's a time that it becomes time bad for you to execute your game plan. Because these people are hearing you, they are seeing you, they are understanding you, they are knowing you, they are rating you. And they can lift that whole thing, which is what is happening in Aquaibon State. A lot of the people remaining in the old parties are just waiting there. They, are, they don't belong there. I'm a candidate, so I can tell you where their heart is. But they are there inside there. And at the dying minute, at the right time, the damage will be done, and they know where they are heading. They know maybe about five or six of us. They know who we are. They know all of us one by one, and they know what they want. At the fullness of time, 2023 is going to be one of the biggest surprises in this country. Trust me. So, so you probably be saying that they are detractors uh, in these political parties. Oh, that's what politics is about. Politics is not religion. Politics is about detractors. Politics is about conspiracies. Politics is about, you know, uh, of uh, not just reconciliation, of betrayals. Politics is something that we really need to look into a little more. That's why people outside do all this, you know, analysis, because they are being very rational. They think that this is what should be. But they don't know that they are dealing with people who don't care about rationalism. They are they are like their stomach, me, mm. myself, and I. That unholy. I, I, and so may, 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 maybe because we're moving that. away from this, uh, you know, issue now, and moving to another. But just quickly, but maybe this is this is actually the issue where uh, people don't stand for anything if the loyalty is not to the party or the yeah. ideology. The they right don't believe people. in that, and that's maybe that's why we're having all of this, uh, uh, you know, movement. Because I really don't understand the rationale of belonging to a certain party and uh, all of your allegiance and whatever is to that party. And then it's, it's not that you want to be there. Your heart is somewhere else. You're not going the same direction. You need to so why know. not leave? I mean, but, but the option is there. So why haven't they left? If that's the issue. But well, no, okay. let's not talk about this now. I know that we, I know you want to. But quickly for this want of time, I'd like us to look at the statement of the former uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. One that a lot of persons have said, hey, uh, you know, today we're having uh, the cell phones because of his administration and what have you. We're talking about Lucia Gunoba Sandro. He says that yeah. politicians may destroy Nigeria. And that's more like, hey, he's giving a tip of what's going to happen ahead of the 2023 election. You have an idea what that means or what does this, what could this really mean when he say uh, uh, that politicians may destroy Nigeria? I'll tell you what it is. The people in politics today are not people who care about a good amount. Let me not use the same brush because I'm in politics. The generality of the people in politics today are merchants. They are entrepreneurs. They are business people who have seen that enterprise called government as extremely lucrative and has very high you know, returns on investment. Now, you are there expecting a dog to bark or a cat to meow. And that's not going to happen. 
when we have more people of conscience come into politics, people who care about this country, when we kind of find a way of removing too much money as, as, as what accrues to political office holders and make service the essence for seeking public office, then we'll have people who come in to serve you. But right now, we're having too many people inside there who have nothing to do with service. That's why they can afford to pay you. Nobody pays you to serve you. Anybody who pays right, you is an call. investment. I'm sorry. We have to go now. Uh, I'm prompted that we really need to go for uh, some reasons uh, beyond our control. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the breakfast. It's usually inciting to listen to you talk about you know, these issues. And I wish you the very best. Thank you so much. And to everybody, have a lovely day. All right, then. Well, that's the size of a conversation on Off the Press with Ezekiel Nyaitok, who's, uh, who's been a guest on the show. I mean, bringing all of that insight and perspective on uh, the papers this morning. We will take a break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation right here. Please stay with us.